I got a new drone for my birthday. We're total neophytes at this, so come learn with us as David learns how to fly his, I mean my, new drone. Hi, this is Marcy and David Lynn, the Just a Little Further blog and website crew, and we're on the road again. We've been thinking about getting a drone for years. When we were sailing around the world on Nine of Cups, we thought having a drone would have a number of advantages. We could get some great footage of cups under sail. We could reconnoiter a harbor or anchorage prior to entering. We could examine the rigging up close without having to climb the mast. And maybe it would help spot all those coral heads in some of the South Pacific atolls we visited. But then reality entered the equation. The winds at sea are rarely less than 15 knots, way too much for a small drone to handle. All those pesky stays and shrouds that hold the mast up would be difficult for the drone to evade on takeoffs and landings. And drones only have a flight time of 20 to 30 minutes, hardly long enough to be of any use in navigation. We finally decided a drone just wasn't practical on our sailboat. We're rethinking that decision with our new van and trekking lifestyle. Just think about all the advantages. We could get some great video footage of our van blue. Likewise, we'd get some terrific videos of us trekking. And, well, I guess that's about it. On the downside, there are probably more places where drones are banned than there are places to fly. And even the smallest drone would be more than we'd want to carry on anything longer than a day hike. Nevertheless, a new toy has its appeal, and I was pretty sure Marcy had been secretly wishing for a drone for her birthday. So I decided to get her one, and after a lot of research, I bought a Holystone HS720. This is the Holystone HS720 drone and its remote. I think we'll start by going over the remote and its operation. First, there are two joysticks. In the default mode, the left stick controls the altitude and the direction of the drone. Press the joystick up and the drone climbs. Press it down and the drone descends. If I push the joystick to the right, the drone rotates clockwise. And alternately, if I push it to the left, the drone rotates counterclockwise. The right joystick controls the horizontal motion of the drone. By pushing up, the drone moves forward. If I push down, the drone moves in reverse. If I push it to the left, the drone moves sideways to the left. And conversely, if I push the stick to the right, the drone moves sideways to the right. If the drone is flying any direction but directly away from you, the right joystick can be confusing at first. You really have to imagine you're in the drone's pilot seat and you're facing the direction that the camera is aiming. This button locks and unlocks the drone motors. When you first turn the drone on, it won't fly until the motors are unlocked. A short press on this button unlocks the motors. The drone motors will rev up a couple of times to let you know it's ready to fly. After landing, press this button for three seconds and the motors will stop and lock. You can also kill the motors in an emergency with this button while the drone is flying. Say, for example, the drone flies into a crowd of people. Just be careful though, this turns the drone into a very non-aerodynamic rock. This button has a couple of functions. A short press will turn the LED landing lights on or off and a long press will change the drone from high speed to low speed and vice versa. This button controls the camera. A short press will take a snapshot and a long press will start or stop the video camera. This knob adjusts the camera angle from horizontal to vertical. The controller also has a bunch of artificial intelligence or AI functions and this really helps to make the drone easy to fly. To start with, there's a takeoff and landing button. When the drone is on the ground and you push the takeoff button, 
the drone will take off and hover about four feet off the ground. When the drone is in the air and you push the button, the drone will automatically land itself. Probably the most important AI function is the return to home or RTH function. If the communication link fails or the battery reaches a low state or I push the RTH button, the drone will automatically return to the spot from which it took off. An extremely handy tool, especially for us newbies. Once the return to home function begins, the drone will rise to about 100 feet, then fly itself directly above the landing spot and descend and land. Before you can fly the drone, the battery has to be charged. The charger needs a 2 amp USB adapter and it takes about 6 hours to fully recharge it. The battery slides in and snaps securely into the bottom of the drone. A micro SD card is used to record photos and videos. It doesn't come with the drone, however, and has to be purchased separately. You can use the camera without an SD card by streaming the image data directly to your smartphone, but I found the streamed video quality to be quite choppy without a card. Alright, now it's time to power up the drone. If this is the first time the remote is used with this drone, we need to pair the two. To pair them, we start by holding the propeller lock button down while turning the remote on. It should make two beeps. Next, turn on the drone by pressing its power switch. After a few seconds, the drone will complete its initialization and pair itself with the remote. The drone should beep twice. The flashing compass icon indicates that the drone's compass must be calibrated. This is done in two steps. First hold the drone horizontally and rotate it 360 degrees three times. When completed, the green lights will flash. Next, hold the drone vertically with the camera facing up and rotate it another three times. When completed, the compass icon will disappear. Also, the forward lights in the drone will turn solid red and the rear lights will turn solid green. By the way, I watched another video on flying a drone and I was led to believe that I had to rotate my whole body 360 degrees to calibrate the compass. Not only does this look silly and make you dizzy, it's totally unnecessary. There's one last thing to talk about before we go out and fly the drone, and that's the smartphone app. Holystone is a great app that is available for either iOS or Android smartphones called the Ophelia GPS app. Once it's downloaded, there are a number of options that can be changed to customize it, but initially I left everything in the default settings. The app has a lot more functionality and features than I'll ever use, but there are a few key features that I like and do use. Notice that the image on the screen is the view from the drone's camera. This is quite helpful when positioning the drone in the camera angle. This icon is the return home function. If you touch the icon, the drone will go into the RTH mode and return and land at the initial takeoff spot. This icon is the point of interest icon. Touching this icon will start the drone circling around a spot. The default radius is 16 feet, but you can change it if desired. This is the follow me icon. Pressing this causes the drone to track and follow along behind the remote. This is the coolest feature of all. It's called the tap fly icon. If you touch this icon, then expand the map to full size, you can draw a route on the map. When you're finished drawing the route and press the submit button, the drone will follow the route you entered. Okay, let's go see if we can fly this thing. We have the automatic takeoff and landing feature, but I want to see if I can do it manually. Not too bad. All right, now let's just take off and fly around a little while. Let's see if we can do it without losing it or crashing it. Ah. 
I know, I know, pride goeth before the fall, but at the risk of getting overconfident here, I'm beginning to think this is pretty easy. Let's take a look at the video footage from the drone. This is the point of interest feature. I'm going to try to get it to circle me. It's a little off center, but not bad for a first try. This is the follow me feature. As you can see, the video is quite jerky as the drone moves and corrects course. I don't know yet whether that's something I can improve on or whether it's something I'll have to fix with my editor. Here's some more drone footage from our second day of flying. There are two more things to do before you fly your drone. First, the FAA requires that you register your drone before flying. Do a Google search on FAA drone registration and their website will pop up. Everything can be done online and the registration costs $5 for three years. You are required to carry proof of registration when flying the drone, which you can print or have mailed to you. Once you complete the registration, you will be issued a registration number. This number must be marked in the drone. You can engrave the number, write the number with a permanent marker, or use a permanent label. For a small fee, the FAA will print and mail labels to you. Before you fly, make sure the area you are in allows drone flights. The FAA provides a free mobile app that will tell you whether your location is in a no-fly zone. If you are flying the drone for commercial purposes, maybe as a realtor or a boat broker, you will also need a license. This involves coursework, an exam, and a licensing fee. By the way, Marcy asked if I found flying the drone to be fun or maybe stressful. It wasn't especially fun or stressful, but like the nerd I am, I think it's going to be a great new tool for making our videos and blogs more interesting. After a bit more practice, we're really looking forward to some great aerial footage of Blue, our road trips, and our trekking. Stay tuned! Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button below. If you want to see more of our how-to, travel, sailing, road trips, and trekking videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also blog and update our website regularly, so check us out at www.justalittlefurther.com. Bye for now.